It's been said many times and printed in many articles. In fact, it seems to be a consensus that Citroen DS seats are the most comfortable seats you will find in any automobile, perhaps anywhere in the world. I'm afraid that I can't agree. So to that end, I said, I, I have to get some other seats in this car or I'm not gonna finish restoring the car. And I said, well, I love the seats in my SM, so I'll try to find an, a pair of SM seats. And a pair popped up uh, near me and I went up and went and picked them up. And I am going to install these SM seats in my DS and see how I like it. I have high hopes but I'm just unsure. And one of the things I'm unsure about is how, how out of place they may look. So we're going to see. One of the nice things about the SM seats is that the angle of the seating surface is very adjustable. So you can raise the front independently of the rear and you can raise the rear and they go up a very significant amount. So you can raise the seat straight up just by raising the front and rear all the way up. So even though these seats are much thinner than the originals, uh, these are about eight inches total, and the originals are more like 11 inches. Uh, because the seats can go straight up, I think I'll be able to make them work in the car. So let's uh, get on putting these in the car. All right. And voila, there it is. I've taken the car for a drive and I absolutely love it. Um, it is just a, everything I expect it to be. Uh, it's like an SM seat in a DS. So it's nice and firm and comfortable and it's extremely adjustable. I have it on the lowest setting, both front and rear, but just changing that setting on the bottom by one notch up or down makes a big difference so this seat will certainly accommodate a lot of different drivers. At the lowest setting, it's, it's lower than the original seat, which leaves me looking exactly through the center of the windscreen uh, above the steering wheel. So it's perfect for me. I'm gonna leave it just like that. And I do have a rather uh, sort of eclectic uh, interior here now. <laughs> I was a bit concerned that the SM seat would look really out of place in the DS, but honestly, seeing it here, I think the DS seats look out of place. I think that this SM seat goes better with the interior than the big puffy DS seat. And I don't know what you think, but, uh, you know, try to imagine that seat is black, you know, it'd look a little better black. And by the way, the, the only reason it's this weird, weird uh, color is these are some extra drape me, drapery materials that I had. And I was doing a uh, test sew up for patterns and I made it out of this drapery material because it was very similar in uh, texture to the what I was going to use originally. So this is just, <laughs> it was meant to be a mock up and actually, you know, it's very weird looking. People comment on it. But I think the SM seat really goes with the car. Uh, the single stock here goes with the single spoke. It just seems to fit in here very well. You know, these pleats, they match here. And it's just, um, I sort of like it better stylistically. And it does give a lot more room in the cockpit. So when I get the other seat in there, there's going to be sort of a giant gap between the two seats and this gap I'm gonna fill with a armrest because I really like armrests and the armrest on this side uh, works perfectly I mean you're sitting here and it's just just the right height there I'm not gonna finish the interior until I finish one last thing that I've been looking to do on the car and that is this yes that is an SM rack. 
the Duravi system. And the reason I'm putting this in is that I dislike the steering in the DS. Although it's very smooth, there's this notchy feeling right in the center, which I can't get rid of. And I've tried everything. Um, I have had the rack rebuilt. I have adjusted everything to perfection, including the angles, the, the valves, and there's still this little nat notchy feeling in the center. And beyond that, it's also vague. You know, this, the, there's no good center feel to it. And the SM just has such wonderful steering, and I have this rack. I know it's very difficult to install, and there's some challenges with, uh, with getting things lined up here. But I'm going to attempt it, and I have a parts car, which is exactly the same as this car. So I'm going to take this old rack and do a whole test mock-up fit into the parts car. And then once I'm satisfied that everything's correct there, I'm going to rebuild this and then put it, uh, in, you know, into the uh, into my driving driving car. And I believe I'm going to try to keep the DS steering uh, wheel and column because I think that's so unique to the car. I really don't want to get rid of it and put an SM wheel in like other people have done. And if anybody has any tips about installing a Duravi rack in the DS, please do share in the comments because there's scant information on the internet. There's just a few posts here and there. I know it's been done, but um, yeah, there's not a lot of information on it. So um, please share experts out there. So I haven't had the car out for a few years and I did have a slight hydraulic leak, so as a matter of interest, I thought I'd show viewers who don't know about the uh, weird complexity here of the DS. These are all of the hydraulic lines, well not all of them, but just under this panel uh, that run the uh, rear suspension. And this is the height controller, which senses and controls the height of the front suspension. There's one of these in the rear of the car as well. And these lines are kind of interesting because there's threaded connections, uh, just similar to uh, brake lines on a regular car. But also there are these soldered in connections where in order to replace the line, you have to heat it up, un unsolder it, and it is silver solder, so it's, it's quite a high temperature. And then you have to take a new line and silver solder it back in. And when I rebuilt this car, I did all of the brake lines or hydraulic lines in the entire car. So there were quite a number of connections, and some of them were just so bizarre that I ended up calling them spaghetti connections, the ones in there. Uh, just, just incredible uh, weirdness for sure. But what was leaking was uh, just up here, the uh, line to the main rear suspension was leaking a little tiny bit. And also this boot was leaking. Actually, it wasn't the boot. It was the return line uh, had popped out and was dripping a little bit. So it was getting onto the pan here and then down onto the ground there, that spot. So another interesting thing is uh, these hydraulic cylinders, which control the suspension height, always leak. And what they did to solve that problem is they put these boots on with very tight seals and these boots fill up with hydraulic fluid, uh, the mineral oil, and then as the suspension goes up and down, the bellow sort of pumps the fluid back into the reservoir. These are like return lines. So all four corners of the car, as well as the uh, steering system, has return lines coming from it. You can even see on the height controller right here, this little tiny line that's a return line because it leaks uh, by design. So just thought I'd uh, show you this uh, little interesting little side note here while I had this panel off. And in fact, I have uh, even decided that I'm not going to change the, the suspension sphere. So I'm going to leave the car soft because with the harder seat, you really feel the floaty softness of the car and it feels very nice whereas with the real springy soft seats it's like too much and and you can't feel the nice floaty softness of the car so there you have it um citronistas and citronistos i'll see you next time